As we all know, Google was recently convicted as a monopoly by the US. It is almost impossible to overstate a company's influence over the internet. I mean, we use Google as a verb all the time. So the conviction is good, right? Google is getting its comeuppance for breaking antitrust laws? Sure, but to me, it points at an even bigger problem. Why didn't the government intervene at other crucial moments, when Google was doing acquisitions or opening up subsidiaries or paying companies to make it the default search engine? Were Department of Justice and Federal Trade Commission sleeping? Part of the reason why tech goliaths are so powerful is because regulatory bodies are way too slow to respond. And when they do, the punishment can range from a slap on the wrist to a pinch on the wrist. At that point, it's just another item in the operating expenses. This is almost verbatim from the Wikipedia article on Google's acquisitions. From 2010 to 2011, for almost two years, on average, Google acquired more than one company every single week. However, the antitrust thing is extremely old. In April 2007, almost 18 years ago, both Microsoft and AT&T raised antitrust concerns regarding the acquisition of DoubleClick, an advertisement company, when Google offered them $3.1 billion. As a result, FTC asked for more information regarding the deal, but they then approved it. Up until now, more than 258 major entities and businesses were acquired by Google. These companies specialized in cybersecurity as services, Android apps, software development, analytics, research, patents, bleeding edge technology, and so much more, enabling Google to be the powerhouse it is today. Recently, Google has been binge acquiring AI companies. And yes, I'm very proud of that term corporate reconciliation at its finest. We'll get back to the acquisitions later. For now, let's look at the gallon of worms that is Google's track record with Apple. According to code documents, ever since 2014, Google has been paying Apple to make it the default search engine in Safari. And Apple was more than happy to oblige. So 2014 till 2017, Google was paying $1 billion per year. Then Apple said, no, 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 no. You need to pay us $3 billion, which is probably the most Apple thing to do. In the following years, that went up to 15 billion, then 18 billion to 20 billion. Holy sh! Apple realized they had Google on the rope, so they just kept demanding more and more. How can another search engine even hope to compete against that? Let's say Google keeps taking the market share away from everyone. Why would you even want to develop your search engine or your browser or other products or services? Your projections would tell you that competing is not worth it. There's no return on investment. As a result, you have little to no incentive to develop your products further. If you've ever wondered, wow, this alternative product is not even close to Google's, this is a contributing factor. Not to mention it's a vicious loop and a snowball effect. We could go on and on about the countless lawsuits, but for now, let's look at the monopoly conviction, which mainly revolved around online search and advertising. The meat and potatoes of this conviction? You guessed it, the payments made to companies around the world for the default privilege. No remedy was reached at, that's gonna be a separate trial date to be determined later. We can only speculate what might that be. Google might be forced to break up its company or it might be prohibited to make those payments again or something else entirely. To no one's surprise, Google is looking to appeal the decision. Imagine you're a young and upcoming developer. You put your heart and soul into the project you love. Your hard work is paying off, maybe something new in the industry. Then you're approached by a a tech giant that says we're gonna offer you a bajillion dollars to buy you out not gonna lie that is a tempting offer there were cases where people sold their life's hard work for a huge amount of money but i can guarantee you a lot of these people knew that they could make even more if they kept on going with no parent company's oversight if they decided to do that then the resolution for the tech giant would be pretty simple they're gonna take your idea and introduce an alternative product which is gonna have way more R&D, marketing, and manpower behind it wrapped in a widely recognized brand. You have no option but to sell. We normally close off perspectives with some recommendations. But I have to admit, after letting a business build a monopoly that is intertwined with every facet of modern life over the course of almost three decades, unfortunately, we don't have a slam dunk of a solution here. 
DOJ might slap Google with another fine or ban them from making the default payments. I spent a long time thinking about the remedies and these get extremely complicated. If Google were to break up, that might result in so many layoffs. If Google were to stop making the payments, that might actually hurt the competition. Firefox receives 86% of its revenue from Google and Chrome holds 65% of international market share. The last thing we want is Firefox to become more obscure than it already is. Punishments such as fines or probation are barely anything. There are far more qualified people than me to analyze this thing and come up with long-term and sustainable remedies that actually promote competition in the best interests of consumers. But our collective strategy can't be the remedy. It has to be the prevention and monitoring. So we'll leave it here. Thank you so much for your support, guys. Please like and subscribe because... I love refrigerators. This is Rogue Hat. Catch you guys later.